All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about converting interest rates because one of the most important skills that you're going to wanna to develop as you go through financial mathematics is the ability to correctly and efficiently convert between different types of interest rates. And so if you look at the different types of interest rates on your screen here, if you've been following along through the lessons chronologically, you should recognize all these different types of rates, except for maybe one, and we'll talk about that in a second, but we're going to look at how to convert between these different rates and the different formulas that you will use to do that to really develop those skills and make sure that we are proficient in converting interest rates before we get into the harder concepts moving forward. And so if you want to pause the video and quickly look over these types of rates to make sure that you are familiar with them, I recommend that you do that before we move into the different conversion formulas. And if you're not familiar with some of these rates, I would recommend watching or even re-watching any of the following previous lessons that I have up here on the screen. So I'll have all of their links in the description below for you to click on. But before we move into going over the conversion formulas, I will point out here that I haven't really talked about this rate here, which is our non-annual discount rate B. And this is essentially the same thing as what J is to I, right? If you have an annual interest rate, then you can also have a non-annual interest rate. And so if we can have an annual discount rate, then we have a non-annual discount rate as well. And that we just label with B. And so that just represents a discount rate that does not occur yearly. And so that would be the only new rate that you would see here. The rest of these should be familiar. And so now we're ready to look at our conversion formulas to see how to convert between these different types of rates. And just a quick note, up until the end of this video, we're gonna be looking at compounded rates and not simple rates. So I'll let you know when we start looking at simple rates. Let's look at our first conversion formula. So first we have our conversion formula from J to I, where J is a non-annual interest rate and I is the annual interest rate. And so then we have our formula here that we have actually seen before in a previous lesson, but we have that I, our annual interest rate, is equal to the quantity one plus J, that non-annual interest rate, to the power of M, where M is the number of times that J occurs in a year, and then we're gonna be subtracting one. And so if J was a semi-annual rate, which means it would occur twice per year, then M would be equal to two because J would occur two times in a year. So that's essentially how you figure out what M is equal to. And so now we're ready to look at an example of using this formula. So for our first example, we wanna know what is the equivalent monthly effective interest rate if the annual effective interest rate is 6%. And so in this case, we know that we are looking for an equivalent monthly effective interest rate, which is a non-annual interest rate. So we know that we are looking for J. So J is unknown in this case, but we do know the annual effective interest rate and that it is 6%. So we're gonna have I is equal to 0 0.06, which is 6% in decimal form. And so now we can use this formula, since we know I, to solve for J. Now the only thing we did not write down is what M is equal to, and since J is going to be an equivalent monthly effective interest rate, we know that the number of periods is 12 because there are 12 months in a year. And so M is equal to 12. And so now we can solve for J by setting up our formula. So we're gonna have that 0 0.06 is equal to one plus J, and then we'll take that to the power of 12 and then subtract one. And so now we're ready to solve for J. And so if we add one to both sides, we'll have 1.06 is equal to one plus J to the 12th power. And so then if we took the 12th root of both sides and that would cancel out this 12th power right here, then we would have the following. We would have that 1.06 to the 1 12th power is equal to one plus J, right? Taking the 12th root of a quantity is the same as taking it to the 1 12th power. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, we took 1.06 to the 1 12th power and subtracted one, we would find what J is equal to. And if you did that, you would find that J is equal to 0 0.0048676. And there's some more decimals there, but I'm gonna round it off there and that is going to be the answer to this problem. We found our monthly effective interest rate if our annual effective interest rate was 6%. Next, we're gonna look at how to convert from B to D, where B is a non-annual discount rate and D is an annual discount rate. And so this is very similar to what we just looked at about converting between I and J, except now we're looking at discount rates rather than interest rates. And so if we wanna find an annual discount rate, we have one minus the quantity one minus B to the power of M, where M is the number of times that B occurs in a year. And so if we had a non-annual discount rate, such as a semi-annual discount rate, then M would be equal to two because a semi-annual discount rate would occur two times in a year. And so this is very similar to our previous formula, but let's actually look at how to use it with an example problem. So here we have what is the equivalent annual effective discount rate if the quarterly effective discount rate 
is 8%. And so we know we're looking for an annual effective discount rate, right? So in this case, we do not know what D is equal to, and that's what we're going to try to find using our conversion formula. But we do know that we have a quarterly effective discount rate of 8%. And so that's going to be B. That is our non-annual effective discount rate, which is quarterly. So we know that that's going to happen four times per year, and it's equal to 8%, which is 0 0.08. And we also know that M is equal to four, since it's a quarterly rate, like we said. And so if we use our formula down here, we can solve for D. So we'll have that D is equal to one minus, and then we'll have parenthesis, one minus B, which we said is 0 0.08, and then we'll close that quantity and take it to the fourth power because that's what M is equal to. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, we would find that D is equal to 0.28. And so that would be the value of D, or our annual effective discount rate, if our quarterly effective discount rate was 8%. All right, so next we're gonna look at how to convert from a nominal annual interest rate to a non-annual interest rate and an annual interest rate. And so our first formula here shows us how to get J, or a non-annual interest rate, given a nominal annual interest rate, convertible M times per year. And so here's the important part. You can't just find any non-annual interest rate by dividing your nominal annual interest rate by the number of periods M. You can only find the non-annual interest rate that has the same number of periods M as the nominal annual interest rate. So what I mean by that is if you have a nominal annual interest rate convertible, let's say four times per year, then you would only be able to find the quarterly interest rate J using this formula, right? These two have to occur the same amount of times per year. This has to be convertible quarterly, and then this would have to be a quarterly rate. You could not take a quarterly nominal annual interest rate where M equals four and divide it by 12 and get a monthly rate. You can't do that. This M and this M need to be the same. And so that's how you would find a non-annual interest rate given a nominal annual interest rate. And then if you wanted to find an annual interest rate, then you would use this formula, which is very similar to the first formula we looked at. In fact, it's exactly the same, except we replaced J with what it is equal to in a nominal annual interest rate scenario, right? We said that J is equal to this, the nominal annual interest rate divided by M, and we plug that into this formula that we had earlier, where we had I is equal to one plus J to the power of M minus one. So this is very similar to what we've already seen, but just adapted to this scenario. And so let's look at how to use these two formulas with an example as well. All right, so for our example, we have that if the nominal annual interest rate is 10% convertible semi-annually, what is the effective semi-annual interest rate and the effective annual interest rate? Now notice here that we are looking for J, which is an effective semi-annual interest rate, right? It is not an annual rate because it's happening twice a year, semi-annual. And then we're looking for an effective annual interest rate, I. So we're looking for J and then I. And we'll start by looking for J. And so we don't know what J is, and so that's what we're gonna be solving for first using our nominal annual interest rate that we are given in this scenario. And so we're told that the nominal annual interest rate is 10% convertible semi-annually. So that means that M is equal to two. And so our nominal annual rate is going to be I, and then two is our M, and that's gonna be equal to 0 0.10, which is 10% in decimal form. And remember, the only reason we can use this formula is because we're looking for an effective semi-annual interest rate and our nominal annual interest rate is convertible semi-annually, right? The amount of times it occurs per year matches up and so we're allowed to use this formula. And so in this case, J would be equal to that 0.110 divided by the number of periods M2. And so J would be equal to 0 0.05 in this case. That would be your non-annual rate or your semi-annual interest rate for this scenario. And so then if you wanted to find the effective annual interest rate, we would use this formula. And so I would be equal to one plus, and then this term right here, which is the same as J, right? We just found what J was equal to, which is the same calculation that we would have to do right here. And so we'll just plug in 0 0.05, and that will give us the same answer. And so then we'll close that, and then take it to the power of M, which is going to be two, right? This is convertible two times per year. That's what this two right here means. And then we'll subtract one. And then if we plug this into our calculator, we would find that our effective annual interest rate I would be equal to 0 0.1025. And so that would be the equivalent interest rate in that case. All right, so next we're gonna look at how to convert from a nominal annual discount rate convertible M times per year 
to a non-annual discount rate and a annual discount rate. And so the same rules apply here that apply to our nominal annual interest rate. The only difference is that we're working with discount rates instead of interest rates, but the same general process is going to apply here. So if we're going to find a non-annual discount rate, B, the times that this occurs per year has to be the same as the nominal annual discount rate, right? So if you have a nominal annual discount rate convertible quarterly, meaning M would be equal to four, then you would only be able to find the quarterly discount rate using that rate, right? So if you took your nominal annual discount rate and divided it by four, you would find your quarterly discount rate and nothing else. You would not be able to take this rate and divide it by a different value of M. These two M's need to match up. So this is really similar to how we deal with nominal annual interest rates, except we're just working with discount rates in this case. And so then if we wanna find an annual discount rate, we use that formula from earlier that we used to convert from D to B, except now we replaced B with what it is equal to in this scenario, right? So B is equal to this, right? The nominal annual discount rate divided by the number of periods M, and we plug that in for B. And so then this would be how we find D in this case. And so let's look at an example of using these formulas. So here we have, if the nominal annual discount rate is 12% convertible monthly, what is the effective monthly discount rate and the effective annual discount rate? So first off, let's write down what we know. We know that the nominal annual discount rate is 12% convertible monthly. So that means we have D and then our number of periods is 12 because it is convertible monthly and there's 12 months in a year. And that's going to be equal to 0.12, which is 12% in decimal format. And then we know that we are looking for B. We don't know what that is. And that's going to be an effective monthly discount rate, which we are allowed to find using this formula because this is convertible monthly. And then we are also looking for D, which is our annual discount rate. And so let's start by converting from our nominal annual discount rate to B, our effective monthly discount rate. And so in this case, B is going to be equal to 0.12 divided by 12, because this is our nominal annual discount rate, and 12 is our M, the number of times that this rate is convertible per year. And so that would mean that B is equal to 0.01, and that is your equivalent monthly discount rate. And if we wanna to convert to our effective annual discount rate, we'll have that D is equal to one minus the quantity one minus this expression right here, which we actually just found, right? When we solved for B, we did that same calculation. And so we can actually just plug B right in here, which is 0 0.01, and we'll be able to find the same answer using that value. And then we'll take it to the power of M, which in this case is still 12. And so then if we were to plug this into our calculator, we would find that D is going to be equal to 0.1136. And that would be your equivalent effective annual discount rate given this nominal annual discount rate convertible monthly. Next, we have our conversion rate from an annual interest rate to an annual discount rate. And this one's actually fairly straightforward. We just have that the annual discount rate is equal to the interest rate divided by one plus the interest rate. And so let's look at an example of using this formula. So here we wanna know what is the equivalent annual effective discount rate if the annual effective interest rate is 4%. And so we're gonna be using this formula right here and we wanna find the effective discount rate. So we don't know what D is equal to, but we do know that I, our annual interest rate is equal to 4% or 0 0.04. And so now we can use this value and plug it into this formula to find what D would be equal to in this case. So D is going to be equal to 0 0.04 divided by one plus 0 0.04. And so then you'd have 0 0.04 divided by 1.04. And that would give you that D is equal to 0 0.03846. And I rounded off there. And that will be our equivalent annual discount rate given this annual interest rate. Next, we're gonna look at how to convert from an annual interest rate to the force of interest. And this is in the scenario where our annual interest rate is compound. We will be looking at simple a little later. And again, I'll tell you once we start using simple interest rates. So here we have that the force of interest is going to be equal to the natural log of one plus the annual interest rate. And that's really all there is to this conversion formula. So if you wanna find the force of interest and you have an annual interest rate, this is what you will use. Let's look at an example of using this formula. So here we wanna know what is the force of interest if the effective annual interest rate is 9%. And so in this case, we wanna know what delta T is, right? That is our force of interest. And we know that we have an effective annual interest rate of I, and that is equal to 0 0.09. And so now we can find that delta T is going to be equal to the natural log of one plus 0 0.09, 
and then we could plug that into our calculator to find what delta t, or the force of interest, would be equal to. And in this case, delta t would be equal to 0 0.086178. And so that would be the equivalent force of interest given a 9% effective annual interest rate. Next, we have the conversion rate from D, an annual discount rate, to the force of interest. And so this is very similar to the formula we just used, except we're looking at a compound annual discount rate instead of a compound annual interest rate. And so in this case, we have that the force of interest is equal to the negative natural log of one minus that discount rate. And so now let's look at an example of using this formula. So here we wanna know what is the force of interest if the effective annual discount rate is 7%. And so in this case, once again, we're looking for the force of interest, delta T. We do not know what it is, but we do know that we have an effective annual discount rate, D, of 7%, which is 0 0.07 in decimal form. And so now we can use this formula down here to find what our force of interest would be. So we're going to have that delta T is equal to negative natural log of 1 minus 0 0.07, and then we would close that. And so then if we plug this into our calculator once again, we would find that the force of interest, or delta T, is going to be equal to 0 0.072571. And again, there's more decimals there, but I'm going to round it off. And that is our final answer there. That is the force of interest when we have an effective annual discount rate of 7%. Next, we're going to look at how to convert from an annual interest rate to the force of interest when the interest rate is simple. So now we're looking at simple interest, right? We are no longer looking at compound interest. The last two formulas here are both going to be working with simple rates, not compounded rates. And so in this case, we have an annual interest rate that is simple, and we're looking for the force of interest. And so we have that the force of interest, delta T, is equal to I, our annual interest rate, divided by one plus the annual interest rate times T. And so in this scenario, you need to be given a value of T or time in order to find your force of interest. So let's look at an example of that. So in this case, we have that if the annual simple interest rate is 5%, what is delta three? Notice that it's not just delta t this time, but we are given a value of time being t equals three, right? So in this case, we wanna know what delta three is equal to, and we do know that the simple interest rate i is equal to 0 0.05 or 5%. And so if we wanna solve for the force of interest, or delta three in this case, we're gonna have delta three is equal to 0 0.05 divided by one plus 0 0.05, and that's gonna be multiplied by t, which in this case is three. And so if you plug this into a calculator, you would find that delta three is going to be equal to 0 0.04348. And once again, I'm going to round that off, and this will be our final answer for delta three, or the force of interest at time three, when our simple interest rate is 5%. So here's our final conversion formula for this video. We wanna convert from D, a annual discount rate that is simple to the force of interest. So once again, we're working with a simple rate, not a compound rate. So this is an annual discount rate that is simple, and we wanna find the force of interest. And so we have delta T, the force of interest, and that's gonna be equal to the annual discount rate divided by one minus that discount rate times T. And so once again, we need to know what the value of time is in order to use this formula. And so let's look at an example of using this formula, and that will be our final example for this video. So here we have that the annual simple discount rate is 5%, what is delta five? So in this case, we wanna find the force of interest, or delta five, we do not know what it is, and we do know that we have a simple discount rate D of 5%, or 0 0.05. And so if we use this formula, we'll have that delta five is equal to 0 0.05 divided by one minus 0 0.05 times our value of time, which in this case is five, right? Delta five, so our value of t is going to be five. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, once again, we will have that delta five, or the force of interest at time five, is gonna be equal to 0 0.06 repeating. And so that would be 0 0.06 and then an infinite amount of sixes. So we just write this little bar to represent that this is a repeating decimal. And so that would be the force of interest or delta five in this scenario. All right. And so that was the last example for the last conversion formula in this video. Hopefully you found this comprehensive video of all the different types of conversion formulas for interest rates to be helpful. If you want to see some more complicated examples, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.